Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. All right, I'm gonna give everyone a second to hop on here. I'm gonna be uh, going over private banking today. So we all check in. Let me know if uh, my audio is coming in clearly. Testing, testing, one, two, testing. I got a little birdie here with me, so bear with me. All right, thanks, Ruby. I'm going to go live on TikTok, too. Oh, looks like they, uh, my live account still banned. They actually, if you guys are watching this um, on TikTok, they actually banned my live account. And then, like, right after that, I got completely banned off TikTok. But they just reinstated my TikTok account. Now I'm just waiting for them to reinstate my live account. Shepard, if you're trying to call our office, you can call us at 817-389-7722. Okay. Uh, you can't call us right now. Uh, you know, it's a weekend. But here's our office number. You can send a, send a message to us over there, too. Our office number. Okay. Go ahead and reach out to us over there if you're having trouble. Um, but you should. Shouldn't be having any issues. Let's see. Pop out dashboard. This is cool, dude. YouTube really be letting you do a lot. I'm wondering if I can like. I can't really. I was wondering if I could share my screen using this feed these features. Moderation, blah. Not really. I'm just going to wait for you guys to be able to get on. Uh, if I edit here. Yeah, it's just webcam. That's fine. I got my iPad over here. I'm gonna be um, I'm gonna be going over um, some case law today about negotiable instruments, as well as promoting the uh, the masterclass that we're gonna be having. Uh, so I'm in India right now. It's already Sunday, but it'll be tomorrow, y'all's time at four o'clock Eastern. Okay. So y'all, let me know if. Uh, Y'all let me know if uh, everything's coming through okay. I'm going to uh, put a little bit of a... Uh... Little bit of music on here just to give you guys a chance to get on. And then at five minutes, when we hit the five minute mark, I'll, uh, I'll, start, uh, I'll start the live. I'll start actually teaching. All right. I'm putting a little bit of jazz in the background. Let me know if y'all like that. Just to kind of keep us going. If y'all don't like it, I can turn it off. I'm trying out some different things. Bear with me. All right. Give you guys just a little bit longer and then we'll go ahead and get started. If y'all are just hopping on. Um, I am teaching a master class tomorrow on how to uh, satisfy debt obligations using negotiable instruments. Um, we have so, a lot of success doing it, um, but it does require that uh, we be very thorough in what we're doing. So uh, that's why I'm doing this uh, this live today. So y'all let me know if you like the what's going on. I got little birdies in the background and a little bit of jazz going. So y'all let me know 
if you like it, if you'd like me to change anything, because I'm about to uh, I'm about to get started. Please like and share this if you want more people to get content like this. Um, Mike, I won't be going live tomorrow because we'll be doing the master class tomorrow. I might go live before the class if y'all want to really get on, but I'm just going to be going over preliminary steps. And by the way, I said I was going to announce the winner for the replay. I'm not going to do that till Monday since we actually haven't had the class. So um, if y'all comment on uh, this chat, you will still have the video to enter the giveaway to get the replay of the class. Okay. So um, welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining my Credit Repair Experts channel. Um, part of me wishes I changed the name of this channel because I do so much more than credit repair, but uh, it's perfectly fine. We're an expert because we know how to repair your reputation. We know how to correct the data um, that your uh, that your straw man or your entity has. Uh, hmm. Okay. Sorry, someone's sending me a bunch of messages. How do you get to the master class? Can you guys see the description? Can you guys see the description of my uh, of my of my live stream? Everything should be in the description. What you need. Let me know if you can see that before I before I start. Huh. Hey Ruby, so I'm looking over that. Uh, I'm looking over that case, Clover versus uh, Bank of of New York Mellon. Um, I mean, it looks like to me that um, the, there was an order filed to dismiss without prejudice, and that the proceeding was terminated. So I guess did they have a uh, did they have a settlement out of court? Did they? Uh, because you said that they successfully got their mortgage paid for using the negotiable instrument, so I'm assuming after the fact they got their uh, they got their remedy. Okay, guys. So can you guys see the description? Let me know. You can see the description. I do apologize. I got a little birdie friend here. Nothing I can really do about it. But I think MacBook it gets rid of a lot of the background noise. Ruby, how did you come to find that case? I'll put that in the chat here so y'all can look at it too. Floor versus Bank of New York Mellon at all. Uh, I can't turn the birds off, guys. I don't know if you just heard what I said. It says to get a shortened URL. Man, are you kidding me? I created that shortened URL on purpose. Let me just put it here in the Man, that's so dumb, dude. The technology's been... Hang on. Hang on a second. I'm just going to put it in the chat. I'm sorry about that, y'all. It's not supposed to do that. I did the shortened link just because of how long the hold the original uh url was but i got it there you go um can you click on my link tree at least it might not let you click on it while i'm going live yeah yeah then drop down switch over to Pacer. Did you download all the documents? If you downloaded it, let me know. I'll actually do a video on it. Yeah, if you could supply me with the docs. I use Pacer, but uh, they'd be uh, trying to keep me off of it. <laughs> they'd be trying to keep me off of it. They don't like me filing and fed too much. They don't like me dealing with them too much. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Can you guys click the links in my description? Is that working okay? 
let me know if you can at least if you can click my link tree. Yeah, send them to me, Ruby. I want to see the complaint. Really, the complaint is all we need to see. Let me know if y'all can at least click my link tree in the description or if at least open something, if you can at least like copy paste it or something. I don't know how the live streams work on YouTube very well. Yeah, thanks, Ruby. I appreciate it. All right. Well, um, can I, I still haven't heard anything. If y'all can like click the links in my description or not, or at least click my link tree. Y'all let me know. Let me know, and then uh, otherwise I'll, I'll fix it. Sale ended. Let's see. Man, they be messing with me bad over here, y'all. They took my link tree down on my TikTok page. <laughs> and the link tree app don't work no more. It's all right. The sale ended. It's no good. Uh, it says sale ended. Well, it's all right. Most people, if you guys still want to sign up for the class, it's uh, it's a thousand bucks. I can get you in still. Um, or $9.99 for the class. I'll give it to you without the fee because Eventbrite charges a fee. So if you guys are interested in signing up for the class, uh, go ahead and uh, shoot me an email. There you go. There's my email address. Go ahead and shoot me an email, guys, if you would like to sign up for the master class. It is $9.99. It will be going on um, uh, Eastern time Sunday at four o'clock. Okay. So if you're interested, go ahead and shoot me an email. You can, or you can contact my office. If you go to my link tree, um, go ahead and uh, schedule with me. Yes, they did boot me off TikTok last night. <laughs> they actually banned my entire account. My account got reinstated. Um, but I think they took away my business account privileges. My bio doesn't work anymore, my link tree. And uh, I can't go live yet. So I'm waiting for them to reinstate my live privileges. But that being said, I'm going to go ahead and officially start the class. Thanks, you guys, for joining the live stream. I know this is impromptu, but I just wanted to give people some teasers for the class that I'm going to be teaching uh, tomorrow at 4 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, the class goes over how to satisfy your debts using negotiable instruments. Okay, it's literally how to pay your bills using bankers, uh, notes, drafts, acceptances, etc. And so uh, I'm going to be going through some key definitions and some key. Uh, I'm going to be going through some key uh, just facts of this matter so that you guys can get a proper understanding of of how to. You know how to use the class you know i'm using it to promote the class i'm only going to do the class once and it is tomorrow so if you guys are interested in it go ahead and send me an email at brendan at cre.credit um the link uh, i put it here in the chat everybody should be able to see it um you can also click on my link tree and you can contact my office if you contact my office um we uh, send a text message to my office uh we should be able to take care of you Okay. You can also hit us up at info at cre.credit if you want to sign up for the class. It is $9.99, um, and it is tomorrow, and you will get a replay of it. I will be doing a giveaway as well for a replay of the class to everyone who likes my uh, likes this live stream, who uh, subscribed to my channel, my YouTube channel here. And uh, no, Kev, it's $999. It's a $1,000 class. It's a class that'll change your life forever. This class should be 10 grand, but I decided to just do it for one. So um, uh, if you want to sign up for the class, send me an email uh, or hit up my link tree. Uh, it's not endorsement. It's using, it's creating your own negotiable instruments. So 
Let me see here. Here we go. All right. So thanks y'all for joining. So let's get started a little bit here. Let's talk about what money is first. Um, actually, no, I don't want to start that first. I'm on the wrong page. Before we start that, we're going to give a little bit of a background on um, how equity and how invoking these processes actually work. So um, uh, I want everybody to understand first that the subject matter that I will be talking about in the master class is spiritual in nature. Uh, it's really whatever whatever spiritual persuasion you have, you need to be very um, clear with yourself that uh, you know that this is a spiritual matter. There is a creator. He is a person. He does have a personhood. He just isn't. He's not like us. He doesn't have faults and his body's made out of pure spirit rather than us, you know, physical beings. And uh, everything that we do has spiritual implications. Uh, everything that we say travels into the ether. It doesn't just... It doesn't just vanish. Everything that we do, you know, everything's about our action and reaction, cause and effect. And so, um, and you're, we're also dealing with spirits, okay? We're not just dealing with a computer. We're actually dealing with people. And those people have various degrees of intelligence. They have various degrees of spiritual cognition. They just have various uh, ways in which they uh, interact with the world. And so we have to be able to tailor our dealings to be able to put people at ease and kind of disengage their their fight or flight response. So um, I teach that in the class, different strategies on how to do that and how to do enforcement, because a lot of times, I won't say a lot of times, but especially American companies, they like to try and just steal your stuff and then and then uh, and then say that you didn't pay them when I'm going to be literally leading all definitions as to why they have to accept money. Okay, why they are obligated to do so. So, um, uh, you know, when we're writing and when we're communicating, we're spell casting. Okay, we're we're literally creating spells by spelling, and they can be good, they can be bad, they can be for people's benefit, they can be for people's detriment. Um, but that's at the end of the day what we're doing. So we have to be very conscious of what we're doing, um, and not just do things haphazardly. There's a way to do things. There's a way to do things properly. And when you do things properly, it protects you. It's literally your protection. Protection is, you know, kind of a, a two words combined together it stands for professional technology. So if you have this technology and you know how to use it, if you know how to use the science, then you will be very successful. But if you treat this very haphazardly and think, think that if you can just fill out a template and send something to a company that you're never going to have to pay your bills again, you're sadly mistaken. So... You know, if you want to be a master at this information, my master class is the place to go. Just uh, uh, send a text to my office uh, uh, in my if you go to my link tree, all my info is right there in the description of this video. Um, and we will, uh, you know, we will be able to create a team of people that are going to uh, really change the game. Because right now the, the banks are so desperate for paper because of the credit crunch and because of the interest rate spikes. And all this stuff that we're seeing a lot more regular, consistent success with these instruments. And I'm really happy to be able to share that with y'all. So in the in the master class, we're going to go over what money is. We're going to go over what the Uniform Commercial Code is and its implications into using negotiable instruments. We'll be going into the kinds of instruments that I'm going to show y'all how to create. And then uh, uh, a step-by-step -step guide on how to enforce them in case there's some pushback, um, because sometimes it does happen. And then I'll be doing a Q&A for all those tuning into the live class. So again, the class is at uh, May 14th at 4 o'clock Eastern. Um, sign up. Just send a text to my office. Uh, link is in the, uh, the bio. My link tree will give you everything you need. Um, if you want to enter to uh, get a free replay, um, please, uh, you have to like, share, and subscribe to all of my social medias, except Snapchat. I don't really care about that. I should probably take that off. I don't really use it. But um, do that and comment on this this video and like the, uh, uh, like the live stream. Okay? So with that being said, I'm just going to read, uh, I'm read two definitions to you guys, and we're going to go into them today, and we're going to break them down. Okay, and these are very important definitions that allow the process that we're doing to work correctly. 
first one is UCC 1-204, and this is item number 24. It's money, okay? This is the definition of money according to the Uniform Commercial Code. Money means a medium of exchange currently authorized or adopted by domestic or foreign government. <laughs> so it tells you that money is government obligations. Okay. The term includes a monetary unit of account. Okay. So it's a unit of account or money of account. It's a medium of exchange, but it's not money of exchange. It's monetary unit of account. It's money of, of account established by an intergovernmental organization or by agreement between two or more countries. Okay. So I'm going to read it again. Money means a medium of exchange currently authorized or adopted by a domestic or foreign government. The term includes a monetary unit of account established by an intergovernmental organization or by agreement between two or more countries. That's UCC 1-201. Okay, the definitions. Okay, the next thing we're going to go into is 12 U.S. Code 1813. Okay, and this is the definition of deposit. So deposit means... And it's a really big one, so I'm just going to go to the important parts. Um, is the unpaid balance of money or its equivalent, which is evidenced by a certificate of deposit, thrift certificate, investment certificate, certificate of indebtedness, or the similar name, or a check or draft drawn against a deposit account and certified by the bank, or letter of credit, or a traveler's check on which the bank is primary liable. And then this is the important part. Okay, listen. Without limiting the generality of the term money or its equivalent, any such account or instrument must be regarded as evidencing the receipt of the equivalent of money when credited or issued in exchange for checks or drafts or promissory note upon which the person obtaining any such credit or instrument is primarily or secondarily liable or for a charge against a deposit account or in settlement of checks, drafts, or other instruments forwarded to such bank or savings association for collection. So I'm going to break down that last part again really slowly. Without limiting the generality of the term money or its equivalent, any such account or instrument, so let's just use the word instrument, any such instrument must be regarded as evidencing the receipt of the equivalent of money when credited or issued in exchange for checks or drafts or for a promissory note. So, okay, if you got a promissory note, Meaning if you got a car note, if you got a, 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 a house, a mortgage, um, when you send them a, uh, an instrument, which, you know, they've said here, uh, a draft, which is the instrument I teach you guys how to make in the master class, the draft is to be considered uh, money and it must be accepted for a promissory note or for a loan upon which the person obtaining any such credit is primarily liable. So that means it's drawn that the, um, is issued, uh, upon me. Okay. So that means I'm, I'm the one that's creating the value. And if my name's on the, on the promissory note or the original loan, then I, I am entitled to be able to issue a draft in the name of the same and have it satisfy that obligation. Okay. Um, and then it says, or for a charge against a deposit account. Okay. So that means if there's a charge on a deposit account, you should be able to, um, satisfy the debt in a deposit account. So that means a bank needs to be able to take these. Okay. A bank needs to literally be able to take these and credit your deposit accounts with these instruments or in the settlement of checks, drafts, or other instruments for collection. So that also means if these are items are, if you got negative items on your credit that are in collection, these, these instruments will work for collection forwarded to such a bank or savings association for collection. Okay. So that's the definition of 12 USC 1813. So before I move forward, are there any questions to what I just said? I'll give you all a second. playing a little bit of jazz to kind of just keep the bird noise out. I apologize, y'all. I'm in India, and it's a beautiful, wonderful place, and the birds will just sing in the morning. 
So let me know if y'all have any questions on what I just said. I'm gonna give, you know, I'm gonna give y'all about another minute, and then I will move on. Uh, Ruby says, so don't refer to it as a check, only a draft. Yes, that is absolutely correct. Um, technically, a check is also a negotiable instrument, but I'm not teaching you how to make bank checks. All a bank check is, is ordering a bank to transfer deposit, uh, deposit liabilities to another bank. Okay, that's all it is. So a draft is an order to pay. Okay, it's an order to pay where the funds are drawn down by a third party that is designated within the instrument. I talk about the differences in the class. Uh, Caroline asks, so you provide the write-up for these negotiable insurance? Absolutely, I provide the um, templates. I also provide how to make them. Uh, I tell, or I show you guys exactly how to make them step-by-step step, and I show you where to send them and how to send them and different ways that they can be sent, different ways that you can go about it. Um, and we're just going to give you all as much value as possible in that class. Um, is it the same for all or different for say a gas bill and a collection bill? So the answer to that question is, um, all financial institutions have a, actually have a trustee, a actual financial institution that can collect on, on negotiable instruments. Um, they, uh, they are required to register with the SEC. And they're required to disclose who their trustee is, which is always another bank. Okay, so that's who you would actually send the instrument to to settle collection accounts. Or you can hire our company to repair your credit and not pay the collections. So either one, you have the option. Why have you all been out of the loop, missed watching the information? I've actually been traveling and doing a lot of different work internationally. Um, and, but I just recently, we just recently acquired another credit company. Um, and we've taken on their employees as well as their clientele. And so I have a lot more help now. Uh, and so you're going to be seeing a lot more content from me because I don't got to focus on, um, doing all the actual business administration at the same time. Okay. Okay, so um, yeah, like I said, we're back at it. You're gonna see, uh, you see that we've rebranded, um, put the logo up here. So uh, do we have a certain kind of paper for the negotiable instrument as far as a money order? Yeah, you're gonna order check paper, okay? So we'll show you guys which check paper to get to that we found works the best or like looks the most official. But uh, we don't you don't have to use it. It just I suggest you use some sort of check paper because it's a uh, it has security features on it. Um, I'm in Texas. If y'all need anything done in this part of the woods, Abilene to be exact. Hey, that's cool. Our office is actually located in North Richmond Hills, Texas. That's North Fort Worth. OK, so feel free to uh, feel free to give us a shout uh, if you click the link in my uh, my link tree. Uh, yeah, like I said, guys, the class is closed um, for sale. But if you still want to sign up, I will sign you guys up individually. You just need to click the link. Uh, uh, you just need to hit up my office. Either send me a text to my office number because right now the office is closed. Or um, go ahead and shoot me an email if you would like to sign up for the class. Okay. Shoot me an email if you'd like to sign up for the class, and I will invoice you. Um and uh, or I'll get on a call with you and we'll get your information. I'll do it. Give it to me. Thank you.
Thank you. It's very hot over here, guys. It gets over 108 degrees over here. Class is uh, $999. Okay. There it was, a $63 fee as well with the... Uh, with the um uh yes with the class and uh, uh i will waive that since you guys will be signing up with me individually so okay so no other questions about what i talked about with the ucc and the deposit okay i'm not going to answer all the questions on how the instruments work on that's in the class okay so if you want to if you want to learn how to do that you got to sign up for the class Okay, so next we'll move on. Um, I'm actually going to read some uh, some court cases actually to you guys about what money is not. Um, what money is not. Legal tender or Federal Reserve notes are not good and lawful money of the United States. That is Reigns versus State, which I'll put I'm gonna put here so you guys can look at these cases about what money is and what money isn't. 226. Okay. That is that uh, legal tender is not good and lawful money of the United States. Okay. We'll just start there because really they all just repeat themselves. But the courts have ruled over and over again that actual money of the United States is, according to the Constitution, gold and silver coin, bullion, or equivalent um, uh, certificates that are redeemable in gold or silver. Those are lawful currency. That's lawful money. The rest is all legal tender. And tender means a to present payment. It means to, uh, to offer payment. And so legal tender can only offset a debt. It can only discharge a debt. It cannot actually pay a debt or satisfy a debt. You cannot pay a debt with a debt that's like counting 101. Okay. And so all the Federal Reserve notes uh, are what are called money of exchange. Okay. I'm sorry. They're called money of account. I'm sorry. Money of exchange is a tangible thing with intrinsic value that could you can use to, you know, uh, transfer value for goods and services. Gold, silver, notes redeemable in gold and silver. Those are all lawful money of the United States. But there are places like Hawaii that have used seashells. Certain places use grains. They use like actual produce to trade and use it as money. Everyone eats wheat berries in certain areas. And so wheat berries are considered money in certain places of the world. Those are all money of exchange. The actual are something you can exchange. And, but what the world operates under today is called money of account. Money of account is an accounting or book entry that, uh, that represents money or a medium of exchange. OK, it's it's used in our financial system, according to GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles. So that means bank credit. That means your money in your bank accounts, credit cards, checks, drafts, money orders, letters of credit. These are all considered money of account. Federal Reserve notes are also considered money of account and are obligations of the United States government. OK. And the reason why it became like this is because how joint House Joint Resolution 192 made it illegal to require that people pay debts in lawful United States currency. No longer can people um, actually use gold and silver to satisfy debts. So they had to put a clause in there that we will discharge the debts dollar for dollar, meaning we will move the debt from your liability side of the balance sheet over to ours. That's all discharge means. Discharge means to move the money over or to make it to where you no longer have to service that debt for yourself. Offset is the better word to use. You're offsetting the debt from one ledger to the other ledger. It doesn't delete it. Discharge will delete it, um, which is not always you know, the case when you're doing these kind of transactions, but the same principle applies. It'll be discharged dollar for dollar. So the dollar amount on the contracts or the obligations, it'll be discharged for that same amount, dollar for dollar. So does all that make sense so far? Any questions about money of account versus money of exchange and legal? what legal tender is versus lawful money? Does all that make sense? I'll give you all a minute or two to ask any questions. I want to make sure you all are participating. If you all want to enter, 
to uh, for a chance to uh, get a free replay of the masterclass I'm hosting tomorrow. Um, comment here, like this uh, live stream, and uh, and go to my link tree. Links in the description of this video, and uh, subscribe to my uh, social media pages. Okay. Y'all want to you know do that? Let me know. Um, I want y'all's participation. Everybody who enters, I'll be I'll be uh, announcing the winner on Monday for the winner of the replay of the class. The class is how to satisfy your debts using negotiable instruments. Okay. How to satisfy your debts using negotiable instruments. I'm talking pay all your bills. Okay. I just can't use that phrase because it's not accurate. I can't pay. Nobody has been able to pay any bills. Does a promissory note discharge the debt for the mortgage loan or offset it? Um, they're really the same. Discharge is done on the creditor side, meaning they just discharge it, meaning they're, it's off their books. They're no longer uh, accepting it as a debt for you. But offset means to move the money, to move the liability of the mortgage somewhere else. So, so offset and discharge are not the same. Sometimes you will get one with the other. Sometimes you'll get one without the other. So it depends on the situation. But again, discharge means from the creditor side that they um, that they no longer you're no longer obligated to the debt. But then on the from an accounting perspective, offset literally means to move the debt over somewhere else, which in this case is on the federal government's balance sheet. Do we need an official seal? No, you don't need an official seal. You don't need any type of setup to do this process. All you need is a printer and a computer and a pen. That's all you need. You do not need um, any UCC ones filed. You don't need any um, uh, trusts. You don't need any SPC paperwork. You don't need an authenticated birth certificate. You don't need none of that. Those things, sometimes they can help you in certain situations like UCCs sometimes might help you in like enforcement processes, but you don't need to have any type of like SPC structure like everyone talks about. Uh, any software, yes, you're going to use Photoshop. Um, or if you have other softwares used to just edit documents, just something to edit a document so that you can, you know, create your instrument. So again, if y'all want to sign up for the masterclass, uh, send me an email uh, to sign up for that masterclass tomorrow. It's a $1,000. Uh, and I'm only doing it once. Okay, it's going to be brendan at cre.credit. Shoot me an email if you guys want to sign up. Any questions about money of exchange versus money of account before I move on? Is this process for the private or for the public? Um, uh, I'm not really sure how to answer that question. Um, I mean, you can use it for your public debts, okay? But sometimes we have a few different strategies on how to get them to accept the instruments, and we talk about that in the class. But at the end of the day, you are learning how to be a private banker. These are private banking tools, okay? So I can accept payment a few different ways. Since I'm not a financial institution, at least not yet, um, I unfortunately cannot accept instruments for payment. I really wish I could, guys. You know, I know people talk about, oh, you don't have to pay any of your bills, but then, you know, I'm asking for money. Um, I'm asking for Federal Reserve notes because I have many instances that I can't use instruments, like when I'm dealing with uh, private parties who accept cash and stuff like that. Um, for the class from Canada, uh, I accept payment via credit card. Uh, I can accept check or money orders. Um, I can accept, um, I don't want y'all to send any cash over the mail. Uh, but I say we ex primarily accept credit card, debit card, check, money order, uh, ACH, wire transfers, um, uh, Zelle, Venmo, Cash App, all those uh, online remittance uh, uh, services we, we can accept. So if there's no questions, I'm going to go ahead and move on. Uh, let's see. So we're going to define what a negotiable instrument is. So a negotiable instrument is an unconditional promise or order to pay a fixed amount of money with or without interest, other charges described in the promise or order, 
and this is if it's payable to the bearer or to the order at the time it is issued when it comes to the possession of the holder. Yeah, debit card's good, Caroline. Just shoot me an email and uh, and uh, I'll get you processed. Is the ACH account linked from the treasury to your personal bank account? Uh, I, I mean, I'm not sure what you mean. I have a, a multiple treasury direct accounts and they are linked to my personal account. And if you want to, if you have funds in your treasury direct account, I will happily accept them for the class. Again, it's a thousand bucks tomorrow. I know it's impromptu, but uh, it's a one-time class I'm doing on uh, being a private banker and paying your debts using negotiable instruments. And, you know, again, the definition is an unconditional promise or order to pay a fixed amount of money with or without interest or other charges described in the promise or order. So there's a promise, there's an order. Promise uh, Promises are considered um, uh, 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 hmm. a promise is anything that's like a note. But yeah, promises are notes. So when you're a note holder, like a mortgage is a promise. Um, it's also, it's a promise to perform as well. There's certain performances that you're going to do as well as to pay where a draft is, as far as I understanding is strictly a promise to pay only, uh, I'm sorry, not a promise. It's an, a draft is an order to pay. Whereas a promise, uh, a, a note is a promise to pay, perform or both. Okay. Um, Okay, so, and this is the definition of a check. So this is why I tell you about the instrument I teach you how to write is not a check. So this is a check means a draft other than a documentary draft payable on demand and drawn on a bank or a cashier's check or a teller's check. An instrument may be a check even though it's described on its face by another term such as money order. In the class, are you going to go over instructing the trustee to run the securities through the TDA? Uh, no, I don't teach you how to do that um, just because I'm actually learning about doing that. Um, but I do know that that is a bona fide process. And, uh, you know, uh, I also know of people who are teaching that already. So I'd rather not try to take their take their information that they're teaching and uh, claim it as my own. Um, none of this information is really my own, but I've at least used this information multiple times and had success with it, which is why I'm comfortable teaching it. Um, but that process where you're telling the trustee what to do, um, I do tell people that that is an option, but just a disclaimer that I do not have any experience with it. So therefore, you know, you do so, you do so with your own, uh, conclusions and assessments. Bob the Builder, I already got my ticket to the master class. I got it earlier this week. Do I also need your credit repair kit if I got bad credit and all my credit cards are in collections for a long time? Um, yes and no. Um, I would get the kit anyway. Um, get the kit because uh, you're going to need to tell the credit reporting agencies to fix your information. Um, or you can hire me. I'll actually do it all for you. If they're in collections, you don't have to pay any of them. Um, you can use these to pay collections, but a lot of collection agencies don't know how to use them. And so you'll need to send it to their bank and trying to enforce it with, you know, very nefarious collection uh, companies is difficult. So I actually recommend that you either hire me to fix it or get my DIY kit. Okay. Either one is fine. So like I was saying before, an instrument is a note. If it is a promise and is a draft, if it is an order. So I'm going to click on the word promise here, the definition of promise, and read to y'all what a promise is versus what a uh, what a order is. Promise. Promise means a written undertaking to pay money signed by the person undertaking to pay. An acknowledgement of an obligation by the obligor is not a promise unless the obligor also undertakes to pay the obligation. Okay, and now let's, uh, that's a promise. So then let's go to an order. All right, and Henry, Henry, I got your email. Um, as long as you're cool with uh, the class fee, um, I will send you the invoice and I'll get you your ticket. 
Okay. Um, so now we're going to go into order, what the definition of order is. Okay, an order means a written instruction to pay money signed by the person given the instruction. Okay, the instruction may be addressed to any person, including the person given the instruction, or to one or more persons jointly or in an alternative, but not in succession. An authorization to pay is not an order unless the person authorizes to pay is also instructed to pay. Okay, so again, an order is a written instruction to pay money signed by a person given the instruction. Whereas a promise to pay is a promise by the person accepting the obligation to pay. So if I write you a promissory note, I'm telling you that I'm going to pay you. If I write you, uh, then that's a, that's a, uh, uh, sorry, let me try to get it. Uh, it's a note. So if I tell you I'm going to pay you, I gave you a note. But if I write an order, I'm telling a third party to pay you. Okay. So y'all get the difference. If it, if it, uh, if an instrument falls within a definition of both, um, a person entitled to enforce the instrument may treat it as either. So if you're entitled to enforce it, you may treat that as either. Okay. And again, a check means a draft, a draft other than a documentary draft payable on demand and drawn on a bank, a cashier's check or a teller's check. An instrument may be a check, even though it's described as something else. So what I'm teaching you all to write is not a check, though. That's really important. It's not drawn on a bank. It is. It does have a draw E, but it's not drawn on the bank. So does that all make sense so far, guys? Let me know if you have any questions so far about what I've said. I'll give you all about a minute if you have some questions. And again, while you're while I'm waiting questions, I'm doing a master class on how to create these negotiable instruments and use them to satisfy your debts, car note, mortgage, child support, credit cards. These all work. I teach you different methods on how to do it um, because these this commercial world, dude, it's combative. These bankers are pirates. These institutions are trying to steal from you. So I teach you different ways to keep them on track. But not, it's not one size fits all. It doesn't work. Not one method will work for everybody every single time. So I'm teaching you guys also the principles so that you know exactly how to use this information properly and how to protect yourself while doing it as well. So you become the bank, not drawing on the bank. Um, sort of. You are, uh, you are becoming the bank in a sense that you are uh, giving them a written uh, order to access your credit. They were already doing that when you first got when they when you first originated the loan with them. You just weren't aware of it. Now you're aware that you're they're drawing down your credit via your social security account. And so you can now instruct them to do so with instruments that you create rather than instruments that they create. I hope that makes sense. Okay. That's not important. Okay. So again, y'all can uh, sign on, become a private banker. If you want to do that, sign on for the class. Uh, it's it's $1,000, okay, to sign up for the class. The class is tomorrow at 4 o'clock Eastern time. You will get a replay of it if you buy the class. Uh, it, so even if you can't make it, don't worry about it. And if you comment, like, subscribe, and share, um, then uh, – you can comment, like, subscribe, and share. I'll enter you guys for a giveaway that I'll announce on Monday for a replay, a free replay of this class. Um, I, Romeo Lust says your birth trust account. Um, no, it's not based off your birth trust account. This does not draw down from your social security account. Okay, to draw down literally means to take money out of. It does not pull from your social security account. It does not pull from your sister KV trust account. It's not what this is. Okay. Not what this is. It's close, but it's not. It's not. It's not doing that. Remember, the treasure. The the United States government said that all debts will be discharged dollar for dollar. Okay, and so that means that they are. You are to take these instruments, and you are to use them to direct the treasury to now take that liability on and take it off of the individual's responsibility. 
Okay, that's what you're telling them. Okay, is the class here on YouTube or Zoom? I only have YouTube, Facebook. The it's going to be held on a special platform. You don't got to worry about it. Um, I believe it integrates with Zoom, but you where everyone's going to get an email um, before the class on how to get in. Okay, and you guys will be getting um, emails to sign documents, uh, NDAs, you know, all that good stuff. Yes, you're the creator. You're creating the instruments. Absolutely. Yeah, 31 U.S. Code 3123, Lee. That's absolutely correct. In fact, why don't we go ahead and read that? Lee always giving good info, dude. Y'all should go to her. I don't know if she's got any videos, but y'all should go to her channel, too. I'm going to pin that comment. Okay, so let me go ahead and... Uh, She's right there, y'all. I pinned her comment. I don't know if she has any videos, but she always be giving a lot of good nuggets on my videos. I really appreciate it, Lee. Let's see. Because we signed over security interest. Yep, that's right, Ruby. We did sign over security interest. You are correct. Okay. Three one USC three one two three. All right. They didn't like that very much. So I tried Tation thirty one USC. Three, one, two, three. Okay. Yes, Lee, respect to you also. Are we creating creating commercial paper with this draft? Uh, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Do you offer the service to be done for individuals instead of one doing it themselves? Uh, I don't because every situation is unique. We actually were doing it for other people, and it caused so much, so much of a headache that uh, we I just had to stop. Uh, so I don't offer it for other people anymore, but I do encourage people who take the class to work together. Um, and I do offer private consultations to guide you through it after the class if you're having a problem. Okay. Um, now, let's see if I can't find it now. For some reason, Cornell Law doesn't want to tell me, so I'm just going to go to, um, uh, you know, U.S. Code and just look at it from here. I don't know why it's doing that. Let's go to Title 31. I know 5118, we'll do both. Let's do Title 31. Oops. Let's do Title 31, Money and Finance. Um, 3123. Okay. So this is Public Debt, Chapter 31, Public Debt. Okay. Three, one, two, three. Payment of obligation and interest on the public debt. So this is 31 U.S. Code 3123. Okay. The faith of the United States government is pledged to pay in legal tender, principal and interest on the obligations of the government issued under this chapter. The Secretary of the Treasury shall pay interest due or accrued on the public debt. Okay. So this is really important. The Treasury shall pay interest due or accrued on the public debt. The secretary may issue bonds. Um, the secretary may designate deposits. But the the faith of the United States government is, ple is pledged to pay principal and insurance obligations of the government. And since the government and House Joint, Re Re House Joint Resolution 192 said that they would discharge all debts dollar for dollar, they're saying that all obligations now are government obligations. And so that's why um, 31 U.S.C. 3123 is applicable here. Does this extend the national debt rather than extinguish it? This actually lowers the national debt because it requires it requires the uh, it requires the debt to be satisfied because we're giving them a uh, another instrument, and so this actually lowers the national debt. We are actually helping them. Okay, so let's go to thirty one U.S.C. five one one eight. 
that's a very popular one. Will you be discussing how to present the instrument, how to enforce them if they're dishonored? Yes, we do go over both. I, I go over how to create it and I go over, um, I go over how to create it and I go over, uh, you know, where to send it to and what to do in case of enforcement. Okay, I'm gonna put this in there so there's no confusion. And again, if you guys want to sign up to get a free replay of the class, um, comment, like, and subscribe to my channel and to this video, and go to my link tree and um, and uh, subscribe to my other or like or follow me on my other channels. Um, and if you want to join the class, the sale ended on Eventbrite, but I can still get you guys tickets. That's nine ninety nine. Uh, go ahead and send me an email at brendan at cra and I'll get you taken care of. Okay. Um, what debts are excluded from this process? Only debts that you have with private parties. So if you have like a, a property that's like owner financed, for example, um, they usually can't take them because they don't have the facility to do so. Um, also, if you uh, um, just basically what you have with private individuals, if you had to give your social to create it, I don't care if it's a utility bill even, or if it was to get an apartment, um, it, those work as well. We've had people literally get $20,000 credited to their uh, rent accounts. We've literally had people get, um, uh, you know, their credit cards done. We've had everything done. We have seen, of course, some retaliation, but we go over that in the class too, like what that looks like and how to, how to, how to take care of it. Okay. So, um, yeah, so again, sign up for the class, shoot me an email because the sale did end on my event, right? So let's go to uh, let's go to 18 U.S. Code 5118. Okay. No, that's not it. Let's just go back to U.S. Code. <laughs> then uh, I need 999. Well, if you got people that you know want to do this stuff, I always recommend like getting in. Uh, getting in with uh, people that you know and splitting the costs. Well, if you have a credit card, you can put it on that because this will work for cards and stuff. Okay. So let's go to five, 31 USC 5118. Hey, you're welcome, Donna. 5118. Coins and currencies. Here we go. Let's go to general authority. Gold clause and consent to sue. In this section, gold clause means a provision in or related to an obligation alleging to give the obligate a right to require payment in gold, a particular kind of coin or currency, or United States money measured in gold or a particular United States coin or currency. So that means you can't, a particular United States coin or currency also means uh, 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 currency is defined as Federal Reserve notes. Those are United States currency notes right now. I'm sorry. Those are not United States currency notes. Those are treasury notes or United States currency notes. But any particular coin or currency. It didn't say any particular United States coin or United States currency. It just said any particular coin or currency. A public debt obligation means a domestic obligation issued or guaranteed by the United States government to repay money or interest. The United States government may not pay out any gold coin. Um, a person lawfully holding United States coins and currencies may present the coins for exchange dollar for dollar for other United States coins and currencies. Okay. So that's very important. Interesting. In the instant replay out of the country only can connect with Wi-Fi. Um, yeah, well, you'd use Wi-Fi to take the class, man. I'm out of the country, too. I'm in India, so I'm going to be there. So you can still attend. It's going to be live, and you'll get the replay. So if you want to get the replay, go ahead and sign up for the class because, I mean, uh, it's going to be huge. Okay. So we've been on for about an hour. I'm going to go ahead and accept questions.
Uh, I think that's enough information for today in terms of how money works and how the money system works and how these negotiable instruments, you know, by all the definitions I read for you guys and how the Uniform Commercial Code dictates um, bank instruments, why, you know, we're so confident in the class and, and the class will be able to provide a lot of value for y'all. So um, if you haven't already, nice. If you haven't already, um, go ahead and go to my link tree. It links in the bio and uh, you can follow me on the various platforms and you can uh, send me an email or send a text to my office if you're interested in, uh, in signing up for the class before it starts. How many littles do you send into your cure? It? Um, you, uh, there is no, you're not curing nothing. As soon as you present it to them, you're presenting payment. Bonds are cured, okay, when you deposit them. When you deposit a bond, they have to cure, which means you got to give them time to um, to actually take that money and move it into an investment, usually. That's usually what you have to do to season or to cure a bond. Again, if you guys want to sign up for the masterclass on how to pay your debts with negotiable instruments, I'm putting it in the comments over and over again because some new people come in and out. Been studying UCC three and four negotiable instruments and different payment systems. Yep, that's what this works for because in the uh, in the U.S., uh, all banking instruments are defined by the Uniform Commercial Code. All right, please, if you guys have any questions, I really encourage participation. I very much appreciate participation. When you say Photoshop, you mean we should buy Photoshop? Yeah, it's a subscription. So I would just get the subscription. You can do it with PDF editors. Like I think it works with Foxit as well, but I've always had issues with it. And I just, it's way more exact to have Photoshop or you can use, I think, GIMP is what it's called. I could be wrong, but there's like free Photoshop softwares. As long as you can load the fonts on there properly, then you should be good. Um, I've had a car loan going on 54 months now with four payments left. Is this applicable to use on that loan retroactively to the first payment? Um, you can issue them a little bit extra to get a refund check. Um, however, uh, if you want to actually uh, get all of that money back sent back to you. That's a whole other process that I'm not teaching currently. I'm still learning how to do that. Um, but that is possible. Uh, just not with how I'm doing it. You're just presenting payment for whatever's on the account. You can put a little bit more on there so they give you a refund, but um, you can't, you know, if you send them, it's, it's too big. They'll just send it back to you. How do you know this will work 100% of the time? Um, well, nothing works 100% of the time, John. Um, just like 100% of the time, I don't uh, 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 delete every single item off everyone's credit report. Some things happen. There's always outside circumstances that take place. Um, but I can tell you that if you uh, follow my instructions, you will be able to free yourself from a lot of these debts because there's a million ways to skin a cat and they are really desperate right now for paper and they're taking them. They're taking a lot of the paper. It's a guy who has a free website, teaches his stuff, and it works sometimes. Um, yeah, there are other people who are teaching it that are teaching it for free. Uh, I'm just offering the class because I actually have a ton of success with it. And uh, I, I have a lot of proof, and I did it for a lot of people. And so I'm, you know, a part of me also is I'm getting the value out of um, about, mm, about four years of work that I've done on this, like, full time. So, um, you know, that's why I'm charging because my time is very valuable. And while, um, you know, other people are teaching it, I'm going to contend that I am probably one of the best teachers on this topic in the space. Um, and I'm really, you know, I got to give the creator all the credit for giving me those talents. Um, yeah, you can pay off uh, rent yearly credit cards. Well, credit cards, um, it depends on the term. So if you have a monthly bill, um, you can't really pay it yearly. You'd have to do it monthly. Okay, Bob. You don't have to do mainly yearly maintenance. Okay. Unless they are a year-to-year -year contract. 
when creating a money order to use the routing numbers to the treasury. Um, we are not creating a money order, guys. Remember what I just read? A money order is a check that's drawn down from a bank. Um, we are not doing money orders. Okay. Um, like a postal money order, y'all got to realize you can deposit funds with the post office. So the post office is more of a bank than the treasury and the Fed is. So those are money orders because those are actually having funds drawn down from the, the post office, which is a which is a bank. But I'm not teaching you guys how to make checks. So therefore, they're also not money orders. Um, yeah. Will this also apply to business credit cards? Yes, it would. How much pushback when initially using this? It just totally depends on the company. It totally depends on the way that you do it because you are a private banker. You have different ways that you can enforce these things. We go over that in the class. So every case, everything is variable. But we talk about what to do in case of pushback all the way up to telling Big Daddy on them. And we, we usually don't have any issues there. Do any of your enforcement options require us to sue? Hopefully not. Um, we haven't yet had to sue anybody. Um, but... We may have to do that at some point, guys, because we got to put pressure on these companies. And so learning to be a private banker means you should also be learning how to sue. If you want to learn how to sue, um, I have a course also on my link tree on how to win in court without a lawyer that you also sign up for. Because um, I am going to be filing some lawsuits on some of these companies just because um, what they're doing, I'm, I am uh, uh, entitled to money damages. Big Daddy is the treasury. Yeah, Big Daddy's the IRS or the Treasury. Exactly. That's just the phrase that I like to use. <laughs> yeah, so if you want to sign up for my masterclass, it's uh, $999. It is uh, uh, the sale is closed formally, but I'm giving you all one more shot to get in on it. If you send me an email and uh, I'll get you signed up. Uh, and y'all can split the course. It's just one uh, It's one link or it's one device per um, ticket. So if you know other people are across the way, um, I will be checking everyone individually who comes in the room to make sure they all have tickets. If you don't have a ticket or you're sharing a ticket, you and the other person will both, you know, the other person who's not named on the ticket will be removed from the class. So um, please make sure, you know, if you split it, make sure that that person's physically with you or just be okay with one of you doing the class and then going over the replay together. What about us that got a plus one? Uh, uh, Don's going to be sending emails on all the people who got plus ones. Okay. So those are the people who bought the class before we rescheduled it. Uh, he'll be sending out an email to how to let your plus one come in. What about us that got a, oh, sorry. Can this apply to owed federal and state taxes? Yes, it can. How about international bills of exchange? Uh, what about them? <laughs> Come on, y'all. Y'all got better questions than that. <laughs> what about them? I just talked about them. I'll probably be on here for another 20 minutes, y'all. Um, to accept any questions that you guys have. I know 15 USC, 1615, you can use to get your money paid back. Well, let's see, Ruby. Why don't we read it? Let's do it, huh? The Ruby and Lee always got great nuggets. I love having y'all on my live streams. As a private banker, do you present invoices? Um, yeah, of course. I present invoices right now. <laughs> um, of course. Um, What's that? Sixteen fifteen. With the process, what is the response time from creditors to get the accounts resolved? Um, I can't tell you, man. It totally depends on what they what they do. Um, I really can't give you a bona fide time. I don't know. I don't know how they work internally. Um, we will be able to get a new vehicle. Um, so that's acquisition. I don't go over acquisition in this class. It is possible to do so. 
Um, but you will need to have, you really need to have more knowledge on this um, in order to actually get an acquisition. I've only seen it happen once and there was a lot of extra parts to it involved that I don't teach in the class. It is possible, but um, that's not uh, that's not a topic in the class is acquisition. Um, will your techniques work for nationalized citizens? If you got a social security number, if you got any loans publicly with any like, you know, like car note, mortgage, whatever, this will work. Where do you get the check paper from? Uh, Amazon and uh, you're printing from Photoshop is a is a program to modify the, the instrument. And you're just going to print from a printer. You can, I believe you can use inkjet or laser. I prefer laser, but either works. You can just get the check paper off Amazon though. Again, if y'all want to sign up for this class, um, uh, it's uh, $9.99. Okay. And uh, uh, you can shoot me an email. Okay. And uh, you can, uh, I'll get you signed up. Can you get the down payment back from a car that's already paid off? Um, yeah, you can. If you just give them the full amount of the car, they'll have to refund you. That can happen, yeah. It's possible. I like to not put any extra on there. Um, just because uh, it takes longer sometimes. But it is possible, absolutely, Lee. It's definitely possible. All right. So what we were looking at again? Oh yeah, fifteen USC sixteen fifteen. There's general provisions, prohibition on the use of rule of seventy eights in connection with mortgage refinancing and other consumer loans, and other consumer loans. Prompt refund or unearned interest required. If a consumer prepays in full the financed amount under any consumer credit transaction, the creditor shall promptly refund an unearned portion of the interest charged to the consumer. There you go. So if you send in an instrument and you pay the full amount financed, um, you will be refunded any unearned portion of the interest charge. So that's pretty cool. Let's see. Is Chase BOA Discover going easy with this method? Do they get pushback from your experience? Um, I've found that we get pushback from different companies at different times for different reasons. So I'm, I wish I could be more exact. Um, I wish I could really be more exact with that. We found that sometimes they do it, sometimes they don't. Certain companies have, I have had uh, American Express like close people's accounts and retaliation. So that's why I recommend a different method um, to do it rather than um, trying to just um, do it the way that we found it worked, you know, very consistently. And we go over that in the class. So any companies that I've had pushback with, which has only for me been Amex and Capital One, um, I'll, I'll show you guys how to, um, I'll show you guys, you know, different ways that you can get it and enforce it. What do you teach different than the bureau bullies? Uh, I don't really know because I don't really know what they teach. I don't really know what their content is. Um, how can you apply this to a mortgage previously paid? Um, you don't. Um, you have to deal with the security itself because it's still actually being traded and monetized. So um, this does not particularly apply to previous mortgages. You can get a 30 day free trial of Photoshop, but uh, especially if you are successfully paying stuff, um, then you're going to want to just keep the subscription. So I'm going to go ahead and keep this comment pinned here. There you go. Okay. So I'm still going through, uh, 15, 15 USC, 1615. And it says here, this subsection shall apply with respect to any prepayment of a consumer credit transaction without regard to the manner or the reason for the prepayment. So that means if it's a, if it's a draft, like I teach y'all how to do, then that's a, that's prepayment. Um, and so uh, any prepayment made in connection with freedom of financing or as a result, acceleration of the obligation. So if they send you guys the order to accelerate, 
to get you to pay the whole amount in full, this will also work. Rules, use of rule of 78 is prohibited. For the purpose of calculating any refund, okay, exceeding 61 months, okay, that's nothing. Talks about the five day payoff windows, written statement required if request is in writing, one free annual statement, additional statements subject to reasonable fees. Yeah, so this is cool. They say the term creditor includes any assignee of any creditor with respect to credit extended in connection with any consumer credit transaction. So they're actually calling a creditor in this section also people who have been assigned the note. And another reason this works, guys, is because we're actually exposing the fact that they have to pay the taxes on all these OIDs, all these uh, originally issued and discounted instruments. Okay, so um, why don't banks like you paying this way? Well, I'm just getting into that, actually, because um, then they have to pay the taxes. And they don't want to pay the taxes, but they don't have a choice. They either pay the taxes or they get in big, big trouble. Or they do a private deal with you where they have you sign NDAs. And, uh, um, you know, it's private banking, guys. You can go in there and tell them, look, I know the game. I'm not going to try to ruin y'all's parade. Just give me what I want, and uh, I'll sign an NDA, and we'll go about our business. You guys can do that, man. Y'all are your own private parties. Contract makes the law. Y'all know that? Article 1, Section 10, Clause 1 of the Constitution is my favorite section. It says that no state shall impair any rights or obligations of contracts. So you you have a contract with the bank, dude. You gave them, you let them put a, a commercial lien on your money, dude, when you signed that when you sign that uh, uh, signature card contract. So now it's time to redo the contract a little bit, man, and start you being the one present to them with contracts and holding them responsible. These codes and all that apply to them. So hold them, you know, you got to hold them to the fire, dude, and you got to be confident. You can't be, you can't be, uh, you know, pansy footing around, to put it uh, politely. Yeah, Capital One is a pain. Capital One, they're just wicked, man. I, I don't have a Capital One card on purpose because of who they are. Article what? What was the article? Article 1, Section 10, Clause 1. So let me write that. Article 1, Section 10, Clause 1. That's the uh, contract clause. So again, if y'all want to sign up for my private class on how to become a private banker and use negotiable instruments to pay off your debts, we got all the proof. We got tons of proof in there. Okay. We can't post proof on our YouTube channels and stuff. So they'll take us down. They already banned me on TikTok once. So um, I got all the proof in the world. Um, and I have, I've been on live many times. I got a bunch of people on here who we've had people who we helped, who got what they needed. So, you know, this is legit. If you want to sign up for that class, um, I pin the comment. Uh, there should be a pinned comment. You got to send me an email because the sale is over. Okay. And if you want to enter for uh, a chance to win a replay of the class, you got to comment on here. You got to like this. Um, you got to like this, uh, this live stream. Uh, and then you got to go to my link tree and go and follow my other socials. You do that. And then uh, I will announce the winner. Uh, on Monday. Okay. So any questions or anything like that so far? I'm only going to stay on here for probably about another 10 minutes. Oh, excuse me. Any questions, comments? I've pretty much broken down everything. <laughs> Do we enforce the courts the same as banks? Yeah, courts are actually closer to banks than banks. What you're considering a bank, like Wells Fargo, Chase, those are actually securities intermediaries. They're not banks. The courts are banks because they actually have a registry. They have a court registry where you can deposit funds into safekeeping while a certain obligation is being fulfilled. So they're actually closer to banks. Yeah. 
uh, they're actually closer to being like a true definition of the bank than these traditional banks are. I'm going through arbitration with them for securities fraud. Yeah, you got to, man. You got to hold them to the fire. This will help. You can, this class will help you with that. Teach you how to teach you how to hold them accountable. Okay, I am getting your emails, guys. So don't worry when I get done here. Um, uh, Henry, I do have yours. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and reply to you real quick. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. We'll be on here about another 10 minutes. If you want to sign up for the class, send me an email. And I will be accepting invoices all the way up to about two hours before the class. So if y'all want to sign up and you're watching this replay, you got you got until two p.m. Eastern time to get in your to get to get in. Okay, have you had any success with Navy Federal Credit Union? Um, yes, yes. I can't go over specifically because it was with a client, um, but I have. Major banks have a network to blackball some consumers. Are you aware of applying this process, blackballing you from obtaining future credit? Um, that's on the public side. They don't actually have, um, that's called the check system. Um, they don't actually have the authority to do that. Um, they can try and do that, but they'll actually end up getting sued. And if that has happened to you guys, let me know. I will definitely do if I help y'all file a class action. I'll do everything in my power to make it okay with me. It's honestly easy to just do due diligence since they refuse you've done your part. Yeah, it is. They blackball you because a lot of people do it wrong. You're like harassing them or you're trying to deny that you need to pay or you're trying to do all this. Like, it's just not going to work. Any more questions or comments? I got 32 people on this live and maybe like 10 of them commented. What about getting accounts reactivated? Um, I don't know what you mean. I mean, if you have to pay to reactivate them, this will work. <laughs> Remember, we're paying them. We're doing what the law says you have to pay. In fact, I'm going to read. I'm going to read a code for you guys. Let me hang on a second. Close down for wrong remittance process. Um, you can try, dude, but like, if I were you, I'd just go open a new one. I'm facing an eviction. I need to know how to create a promissory note. Uh, I don't teach you how to make promissory notes. I teach you how to make drafts, orders. But same principle. This will work. It'll pay. As long as it's not with a private individual, if it's with a company, this will work. Thanks for the great energy. Yeah, Don, no problem. Thanks for your patronage, as always. Um, I'm going to... Sorry, guys. I'm actually going to I'm going to read you guys a code that I found. That's actually really awesome.
Uh, hang on a sec. I'm trying to figure out where I had it. I think Telegram, maybe. Yeah, just bear with me, guys. I'm going to find something. If y'all have any questions or comments, let me know while I find it. How much is my credit repair service? Um, we have a few different packages. Um, if you, um, The lowest package for done for you is um, $288 and then $99 a month. Um, Henry, I just got your email. Um I'm not doing another one of these. So if you buy it, you will get the replay. Um, I'm not doing another live class, though, of this particular topic. Um, but like I said, credit repair service, 288 and then 99 a month. Um, we do offer uh, higher packages, though. We do offer consulting with that um, if you need inquiries removed, et cetera. Uh, my contact email, I pinned the comment. All right, so if you want to sign up for the class, it's tomorrow, email me, okay? Email me, and I'll invoice you. I will accept invoice, invoices until um, 2 p.m. EST. Okay, where did I put this thing, man? Um, I don't know where I put it, man. I'll just do it in another video, but it's cool. It's cool. It just talks about how all these financial institutions technically work under the Federal Reserve's oversight. And so they have to accept, and it tells you too, that they have to accept um, the same money instruments that the Federal Reserve accepts. Um, I don't follow file suit for people i can consult with you to either do that or you can take my class on how to win a court without a lawyer the link is in the bio here or the link i'm sorry is in the description of this video my link tree you'll find like how to win a court without a lawyer how much for the do it yourself credit repair uh it's 197 for the diy kit and that's on my website you can find my website in the link tree in the description of this video um, how many different hats does one entity switch off with operating in his private banking? Um, I really don't know how to answer that question. Um, it just depends on what you need to do. Um, whatever, I don't know what endeavor you are in, so I don't really know how to answer that question. I got an unfinished Navy Fed collateral loan, cars collateral. I got the car, they got the note. Where do I go from here? Um, you either take my class on how to satisfy it with negotiable instruments, or you pay it off. You pay it right regular. Or figure out another way if you want to sign up for the class it's tomorrow four o'clock pin comment email me because the sale is over on eventbrite has this worked to clear boa mortgage um i don't know never had a boa mortgage but all mortgages are the same we've had it work for mortgages i don't know if it was a boa but they got to take them rent credit card mortgage hydro bills except not loans or lines of credit. Wait. Yeah, all of that's included. It's just, if you're with a private, like let's say I loaned you a thousand bucks, I'm not a financial institution, so I can't accept drafts. So it wouldn't work for that. But anything that's labeled a financial institution, banks are securities intermediaries, car dealerships, even utility companies are financial institutions because they take your social so are um, cell phone companies. So are pharmacies. That's why CVS and Walgreens get your social for the membership. They trade, they monetize and securitize those as well. Do judges and court clerks get paid in Federal Reserve notes? No, they don't. They actually get funds credited to their accounts, to their campaign accounts, to what's called um, 
uh, to what's there's a word for it. They're canon accounts because uh, they're connected with the clergy and the clergy have certain bank accounts. So um, they get funds credited there and then they get funds credited to their hedge funds slash their retirement plans or 401k and their pension. They don't get paid directly for any of this. Um, no, we don't use any consumer law because this uses the UCC. So you can use this if you're not in the United States. Hospitals. Um, yeah, hospitals are financial institutions because they take your social. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Cell phone, pharmacies, banks. Got it. Yep. You're welcome, Caroline. All right. Any last questions or comments? Once again, to reiterate, class is on tomorrow at 4 o'clock Eastern. Can this satisfy that credit card lawsuit? You can pay for the credit card. Absolutely. I'm auditing the hospital that I was born in. Yeah. Let me know how that goes, Lee. Um, Lee, send me an email and reach out. You know, I'm always looking to, you know, collab with other people on this work. Always looking to do that. Okay. Um, so, yeah. The classes, they're pinned. Um, if you're watching the replay, go ahead and go... Uh, go ahead and go on my uh, my link tree and hit me up there. Hit up my office. Send me a text. Um, calls don't work right now to my office. Oh, they do, guys. They work, actually. Everything works. So call us. Call us. You can't call us right now because we're not in office hours, but send us a text uh, or send us an email, and we'll be happy to take care of you. Do you host visitors in India? Yeah, we do. We just got to check you out. As long as you check out, we can host you. A lot of weird people come through here, and we don't. I, I keep them away. If they, if they, you have used Federal Reserve notes, is that going against their oath? Yes, it is, because only board members of the Federal Reserve Bank are allowed to accept Federal Reserve notes. Okay. So you know, two more minutes. Any questions or comments? Then I'm going to go ahead and end this live. Um, I look forward to everybody who's already gotten the class. Thanks for your patronage. I really look forward to being able to help all you guys out. Um, for all of y'all that haven't signed up, if you comment here on Monday, um, I will do a g announcing the giveaway for um, the replay of the master class. And then um, uh, I'm only doing this class once, and uh, we haven't decided if we'll sell the replay or not. So get in while you fit in. <laughs> okay thank you kindly you're very welcome y'all so that being said i'm gonna go ahead and end this stream Hari krishna jay Shri krishna may the creator always give you blessings much love if you read the bible shabbat shalom praise yahweh peace